QuickBooks Desktop 2023. New customers set up and accounts receivable beginning balances. Let's do it within two is QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars practice file that we started up in a prior presentation. Now going through the setup process we do every time we open it, maximizing the homepage to the gray area, going to the view dropdown, noting that we've got the hide icon bar and open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side we're also going to be opening up the major financial statement reports now that we have some data within them that being the balance sheet and the income statement we can go to the reports drop down company and financial i'll open the profit and loss it doesn't have anything in it yet but i'll open it anyways let's put the date range from 0101 Two two to twelve thirty one two two. Remember, and this is going to be the prior year that we're entering our beginning balances as of, and then the current year we will be working in on will be uh, starting January first, two thousand twenty three. I'm going to customize it up top. Go to the fonts and numbers and change the font size so that it'll be a little bit larger to twelve. You don't have to do that on your end, but you may want to. So we'll say, okay, there's our font. We're gonna to go to the reports drop down again, company and financial, this time the balance sheet. This is the other major financial statement. Later on, we'll start be using the trial balance more and more, which is in essence, the balance sheet on top of the income statement. Gonna customize that report, change the date range from 010122 to 123122. We'll go to the fonts and numbers, change the font size to 12, okay yes and okay so last time we entered our inventory items now we're looking on the accounts receivable let's go back to the home page we're now going to be adding our customers noting that if you're starting a new company file then you might just be adding the customers as you make sales so for example if you're selling stuff at a cash register then you might when you make a sales receipt be adding the new customers as you enter a, a new customer into the system as we did with customer number one we could just add uh, the customer now having a lot of detail on the customers could be more or less important depending on the industry that we are in typically we want more detail on our customers so that we can give them information like newsletters and so on and so forth however if you're doing one-time sales and you don't really expect to be interacting with the customers again because that's not the kind of business that you are in then possibly you know you're going to enter the minimal amount of data in order to facilitate the sale you also might be in a situation where you're doing like gig work or something like that where you're getting paid by a platform and you might just be setting up like the platform would be like youtube paid you or something and you might just record that when you have the deposit going into your system possibly with the use of the bank feeds that would be the easiest kind of receivable system that we've talked about in prior presentations and then the next easiest would be a cash based system like a cash register system where you get paid at the same time and then you might have to invoice customers which would mean that that you're billing the customer for work that you did in the past and usually this kind of business would be something like a, like a law firm, CPA firm, bookkeeping firm, where you wanna have more interaction, you wanna know more about your customers because you wanna provide them more information and have a repeat customer uh, kind of situation. So once again, you could add the customers as you create the invoice, but you probably want to be collecting more data from, from the customer, such as their mailing address, their email, and so on and so forth so you can have more constant communication as opposed to a one-time sale 
Now, if you're starting the software and you had an accounting system in the past, you might already have customers set up. You have a customer list from the prior accounting system or in some other location that you want to add here. So in that case, we could do it in a similar way as we did with the items. You might export your customer list to an Excel worksheet, for example, which might look something like this. And then we'll try to organize this and add all the customer information into our system, which will be more and more important if we're in the type of industry where we want to be uh, communicating with the customers constantly, like a service kind of business, as opposed to a one-time sale transaction to the customer. In other words, it's, vital, it's the most important to have the customers in our system that we do business with on a, on a regular basis. Those customers, which we just have a one-time sale to, like the vendors, might not be as important because we'll just add the minimal information for that customer when we actually make the sales transaction. So that's what we'll do here. But also note that we might have a receivable on the book. So if we had a prior accounting system that we are imagining we're going to enter the beginning balances into our current accounting system, we might have a receivable on the books representing work that we did in the past that we have not yet been paid for, in this case, 20500 I can't just put the receivable on the books with a journal entry because that, that receivable within QuickBooks needs to be tying out to the subledger, breaking out by account. So as I add the customers, we have two goals for adding the customers. Number one, when we first start the company file, I want to add the customers to make it as easy for me to enter invoices and sales receipts in the future and have the customer data be populated for us. We want to have the contact information into our system and so on for the customer. And also, if there's a beginning balance, we're going to use the customer data input field to tell us who owes the money, which will also record the increase into the accounts receivable. And like we saw with the inventory items, the other side will kind of default over here into equity. It'll be a little bit different because it's likely that when I enter the receivables into the system, QuickBooks is, is going to use an invoice to increase that. So the other side is probably going to go to an income account, but that's okay because it's in the prior period, which is going to roll into the current period as we as we then pull it into our system. This should be 1231-2022, by the way, instead of 2021. But in any case, let's go back on over. All right, so then we're going to go into our system here. We're going to say the customers. We can go to the customer center here, drop down customer center. And we have our customer, one customer that we set up as our kind of example customer before. We could add our customers as we go when we enter invoices or sales receipts, or we could add a new customer one at a time here. Let's just take a look at the data input screen to do that. The minimum information to add a customer is just the customer name. Then they might have an opening balance. That's what we're going to need to be putting in place to put that beginning balance into the system. QuickBooks put in the other side somewhere in terms of the chart of accounts, typically to like unclassified income or something like that. And then we've got the address. This is uh, the name. And then these are not required fields, but the more and more we do repeat business with people, we would want to collect stuff like their phone number, their you know, the work number and all that kind of stuff. The payment settings uh, we might need to set up if we have different kind of payment structures in terms of how they're going to be paying us uh, within the set within the system, credit limits, uh, payment terms, things like, you know, when are they going to pay us within 30 days after the invoice and if there's any kind of like discounts or anything we're giving them to pay us early we could have more complex price levels st uh, structured here which if you want more information on you could take a look at the you know their question and answer format in the help area but you can have more complex kind of price level structures that's kind of a specialty area we might talk about that in its own section but Preferred delivery method, email would be default at this point in time, typically if when we're invoicing the customers, for example. Preferred payment method, so we can add, and we saw that there's a list of the payment methods that they have here. You could add more payment methods to the list. And then credit card information, if applicable, uh, if, you got, if you got the capacity to turn on, on the credit card, the name of the card, credit card, and the transfer. We got the sales tax settings. So this, by default, the new customers are going to be subject to sales tax. And remember that the sales tax, 
will be determined by are we subject to sales tax in terms of what we are selling, service items often not, inventory items often subject to sales tax, it'll be dependent on location by state for example, if they are subject to sales tax, then the item, inventory item, will typically drive whether their sales tax will be applied or not. And then there's a default here that we could say turn off sales tax because possibly this customer is not subject to the sales tax because they're not the end user. So, so there's that and then the tax item that they're subject to. So notice that you could have customers that are in different locations that you're making sales to. So the customer is going to be determining, determining if you have multiple locations of sales tax, which sales tax grouping is going to be applied to them. And then the resale number, if applicable. And then you've got the additional information. So you've got some components or capacity to add additional fields, which might be useful when you're sorting your data and when you've got filtering options in reports, for example, in specialized areas. And then if there's job information, you've got the job information if there's a job cost uh, uh, kind of system. So we're going to then say, okay, that's the general information. The basic information you need, of course, is just the name. And then you're going to need the amount if they owe you money so the accounts receivable can be put in place. So we can also add them, like with the items, multiple items at a time. So if we have a lot of customers, we can do the same thing we did with the items, with the customers as the, with the items. We can go here and say this is going to be lists for customers possibly export all of the customer information that we think is relevant to a Excel worksheet and then try to copy and paste the Excel worksheet into our system. Before we do that, we got to make sure our headers line up to the same kind of headers that are in uh, QuickBooks. So, and notice also you got some kind of interesting little quirks here where you, where you might have like the name here, Anderson, guitars and then you might have the name first name and last name and then the company name and and some of your data might be last name first name it might be in one cell and you want it broken out in two cells and that kind of stuff there's a lot of like excel tricks that you can use possibly for example to break up anderson guitars into uh into two cells for example or if you have first name last name and you want to combine them together you can use excel formulas to do that so I won't go into that in detail here, but just note that if you do some Google searches on Excel tricks to combine names, break out names, and, and that kind of stuff, you can, you can do that fairly quickly. So if you export your data and the name isn't in the format that you want it to be in, in terms of it's got two things in one cell or it's broken out and you want them in one cell, then you can use some Excel formatting to, to break them out without having to retype the whole list would be the general thing I want to just put across here. All right, but this isn't an Excel course, so we won't go into that in detail. We're going to customize the headers up top. And over here, we've got the chosen columns. And over here, we've got the, the headers. So these are going to be in vertical order in the same way as they're in the horizontal order on this side. And so the ones we want here, there's a lot of different things we could put in here that we saw all the data input fields that we saw are kind of available but we're going to try to limit it. So we've got the names, we got the name, and then we've got uh, the company name. So I got name and then I put first name. Let's pull this up. I'm going to say up, up, first name, last name. I'm going to move this up, up, up. So I got name, first name, last name, and then I've got the company name. So company name, and then we've got the main phone number. Okay, so main phone number. So I'll move that up. And then we've got, what else we've got? We've got the address and then the email. So we'll say, so the address and the email. Let's see. So it looks like we've got bill to one. I'll use that as the address. I'm going to move that up, 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 up. And then the email. Let's move this up 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 okay so there we got that okay anything anything else we've got over here we've got the email we've got the customer balance and the as of date so i don't need i'm going to take off this stuff i don't need i'm going to remove that i'm going to remove the middle initial uh move, remove fax number i'm going to remove 
uh, alternative phone number, CC, I'm going to remove all the other bill twos, I'm going to remove, and then we needed, then I forgot, I need the balance, customer balance, I'm going to add that, and then the as of date, as of date, start date, what did I call it here? Oh, it's right here, my cursor's right on, it's the opening as of date, so I'm going to add that. So I think that is it. So I'll say, okay. So now hopefully my headers up top match what I have over here. And I should just be able to copy this, select this data, control C, copy it, and then put that over here. I'm gonna keep customer one in there. So I'm not gonna like override it. I'm gonna put it right down here, control V. So there we have it. So now we got the customer name. I'll hold on a second. Something funny happened here. Let's go back on over because I didn't copy the whole thing. Ah, oh, man, that messed it all up. So I'm going to copy this whole thing again. Copy. Go back on over. And then I'm going to close this without saving. So I'm going to say, no, do you want to save? No, I messed it up. Let me, let me do it again. And I'm going to hit the drop down to do it again and add multiple and try to do it right this time. So do I have to cut? Now I got to customize it again. All right, I'm going to choose... No, I got the same fields, so I'm still good. I'm good. Okay, so then I'm going to put my cursor here, control V. That looks more like it, right? Because that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so then these beginning balances then should increase what they owe to us. And if they owe it to us, it's going to be an accounts receivable. Now, the sum of those beginning balances then should add up to our accounts receivable balance the 20,500 here. So as I enter these customers, it's gonna populate 20,500 20, on the balance sheet. The other side is gonna go somewhere. It's gonna end up in equity. I would imagine that since these are customers, remember that QuickBooks doesn't just use a journal entry. They're gonna, they're gonna try to use any form possible before using a journal entry. I would assume they're gonna to try to use an invoice because that's usually the form used to increase the accounts receivable. The other side is usually an income statement account. So I would assume the other side goes into income. So let's check it out. We're gonna say save it and close it. And so we add the three customers. Okay, so I think it did it what we wanted. So here are our three customers. I'm, at, I'm now in the customer center. So there's our three customers and it looks good, I think. All right, let's pull this out a bit. So there's our three customers. Okay, if I wanted to edit any of their detail, I can go into them and edit their stuff. Here it is in like a one by one kind of setup. If I made another sale to a customer, I can go to the home tab and I have an invoice and now I've got our customers we could sell to and so on. And we can add a, like whatever and the sales tax should be calculated for them and everything. I'm gonna close that out and say no on that. We're not gonna record that. I'm gonna then go to my balance sheet and say, is accounts receivable on the books? It is on the books. There's the accounts receivable 20,500. If I double click on it, then you could see it added an invoice. So that's the form it used. We didn't enter an invoice. Why did it add an invoice? Because that's the form typically used to increase accounts receivable. So QuickBooks said, that's what I'm gonna use. If I double click on it, it made this invoice. Where did it put the other balance uh, to? Description opening balance equity. So let's close this out. Did they put it there or to income? The split here says that's the other account impacted. It went to uncategorized income, which is an income account. They made up an income account, I think. So I'm gonna close this out and then say, well, I can see it down here. There's the 20,500, but it's in net income. Net income is the bottom line of the income statement. So if I go into the profit and loss, there's the 20,000, the 20,500 that is now in and the income statement at 20,500, if I double click on it, there it is. Well, that's kind of a mess because I don't want it on the income statement, but it's on the income statement as of the prior year because these do represent sales that happened, but they happened in the prior year. And I'm trying to get my balances in place as of the first day of the current year that I'm gonna start doing business in 2023. So the fact that that's in there last year doesn't matter because I'm gonna look at my prior year accounting records if I have any questions about 2022 or before. And so if I change this up to 2023, 0101230 oh, into 123123, there's nothing there because prior year rolled into the balance sheet 
and that's what this is representing in net income. In other words, if I change the date up top and I bring this up to 2023, you can see that net income right there is going to roll into the into retained earnings. So I'll say okay or whatever they call it, they call it owner's equity. So now it's not, now it's in owner's equity. That's what we would expect. So notice everything else is going according to plan, meaning I'm entering the beginning balances and then the other side in some way shape or form is washing out to the equity section. I don't care what they call it. They can call it opening balance equity. They can put it to the income statement, which then rolls into retain earnings or opening balance equity or, or the owner's equity or a cap, whatever they want to call it. As long as it's going to wash out in the equity section, then at the end of this, if I have all of these accounts up top, total equity will be correct because of the double entry accounting system. And then I can then apply out the equity in any way that's appropriate, meaning if it's one single owner, I can just apply it all out to the owner's equity using a journal entry. Partners, I can apply out the proper balance to the partners. If it's a corporation, I apply out the proper balance to retained earnings or whatever. So we'll do that at the end of the process. We're also going to have a sub ledger that breaks out the accounts receivable by customer, which we can we saw in the customer center in essence, but we can also see it reports drop down and then customers and receivables customer balance summary report and there and there that is let's customize it make it a little bit larger so you can see it at 12 okay so now we've got these are the people that owe us the money tying out to the 20,500 20, that's why they have to use an invoice because if i just used a journal entry then it's less it's those things aren't really as designed to to go together to tie out the sub ledger and then also when they actually pay us this money I'm typically going to go to my customer center here and say that they paid us and I'm going to and I'm going to have to basically receive a payment on this, right? So I need to connect the payment that I'm going to be receiving to the invoice. So if I receive a payment, I need to see it tied out to the invoice so that I can do my normal accounting process from this point forward and still try to collect, of course, on the money that is owed. So I'm going to close that back out. So that's that i'm going to close this back out and go back to the balance sheet so there it is now also note that as you're doing this it's a little bit easier to look at the trial balance so we might later on start going to the reports drop down accounting and taxes trial balance changing the date from 010122 to 1231.22 and customize it fonts and numbers change the font to 12 okay yes okay so, so now you can see see it just in a, in a shorter format with all the subtitles, subtotals here. And, and you can also see, okay, if I change this up to 2023, then you can see what's going to happen to the income accounts are going to roll in to the equity. So there will not be any income accounts. So it rolls into equity, so there are no income accounts. Now, notice if you're entering data in the middle of the year, which you wouldn't recommend typically, you want to, you would like to enter all the data for the current year in the current year, but you could then say, okay, I'm going to go into these, to these 010122. I'm going to go into all of these. This is the inventory. I'm going to go into the accounts receivable from 010122. And I might try to try to say I, I would like to set this up so that so that these items go into a, a a the equity account directly, or you could do a journal entry that would be closing it out of the income account. So if I take this back to two two to two two, meaning if it bothers you that this is going to an income account because you're entering the beginning balances like in the middle of the year, then you could try to try to do a journal entry to put that into the equity account if you're concerned with the prior year. But if you're not worried about the prior year because the cutoff of the prior year is in the other accounting system and you're only worried about 2023 going forward, like we are, that's how I would recommend doing it, then the fact that this has income in the prior year doesn't make doesn't matter, right? Because I don't care about the prior year. It's correct from the cutoff going forward.